Hello YouTube and welcome to Psy Prime Productions. I'm a new YouTube channel, so bear with me as I figure things out. All right, so you guys have been asking for more equipment review videos, so I've made another one. Now, some of you have been asking for like top five runes video, and I may do that in the future, but for right now, I do want to make a low level item video. See, if you're anything like me, you kind of hate shopping for gear for your first level character. I usually just buy an adventurer's kit, the armor and weapons I want, and I just go. I generally don't like wasting my time scouring through book after book to see if I need to buy some random widget or something. But there are actually a lot of really handy items that are level 0 or 1 that you can buy for your character and they can be super helpful, so I'm going to highlight them today. Why am I focusing on only items that are level 0 or 1? Well, it's because you can buy all of these items from the start of the game even if your game master restricts you to only buying items at or below your character level. In other words, all of these items are useful to at least some builds and you can buy them at character creation. Oh, and for what it's worth, for a definition of items, I'm talking about what the game calls adventuring gear. I'm not counting weapons, runes, or armors as items. I know technically weapons and armors are a type of item, but I've already done videos on them, so go check them out. Firstly, a couple of honorable mentions. The first is the reading ring. The reason this is an honorable mention is because even though you could buy one at character creation, as it is a level one item, the issue is it costs 15 gold pieces, which would be all of your starting GP for most characters. But the reading ring is really cool. It's supposed to be an aid for blind characters. What it does is that when somebody wears it, they can run their finger across a page and the words on the page are beamed straight into their brain. This allows blind characters to read any languages that they can speak. This is fantastic, not only for blind characters, but for anyone. This allows you to read in the dark if you don't have dark vision or if the room is full of smoke or mist. Also, if you critically fail a save versus the blindness spell, you are permanently blind and someone has to succeed at a counteract check with the sound body spell to fix you. If you don't have someone that can cast that spell in your party, you might be stuck blind for days or weeks until you get a high level spellcaster to fix you. That could be devastating for a wizard who needs to read his spellbook to get his spells back. Now, there is a bit of controversy surrounding the ring. See, it says you can read any language that you are, quote, fluent in, unquote, but fluent isn't defined as a term in Pathfinder 2E. Does that mean any language you can speak? If that's the case, then there's a kineticist feat that lets you speak, but not read or write, all the elemental languages. Does this ring let you read them too? Mm, talk to your GM about what this ring actually does. A second honorable mention is the Dusty Rose Prism Aeon Stone. Now, this is an honorable mention because it is 50 GP and level 3, so you can't buy it at character creation. However, it's so good, I couldn't pass up an opportunity to talk about it. The Dusty Rose Prism Aeon Stone is just the best. It's an Aeon Stone, meaning it orbits your head, so it doesn't take up any space. The best part is, it gives you the Shield Cantrip as a spell you can cast, even if you aren't a spellcaster. This is phenomenal. If you are some kind of warrior who has both hands full, like say a great pick fighter or a two weapon ranger, then this Aeon Stone can be used to give you a plus one to AC as if you had raised a buckler. You can use it instead of your third attack in a round when you would normally suffer a minus 10 penalty to hit anyway. Anyone who plays Pathfinder knows that every plus one matters and a plus one to AC can be the difference between getting crit or just getting normal hit. And it works from early levels all the way up to level 20. Okay, so that's enough of the honorable mentions. Let's get down to the actual list. All of these items can be bought with the starting funds and should leave you with enough money to probably buy everything else you need. Number five is the armored skirt. How often has this happened to you? You're making a champion or fighter or some other character with heavy armor proficiency. You eventually plan to wear full plate armor, which has a dex cap of zero, so your character has a plus zero dexterity, except, oh no, you can't buy full plate mail right off the bat. It's too expensive and too high of a level. You could buy some splint mail instead, which is almost as good, but oh no again, that's 13 of your 15 starting gold pieces, and that doesn't leave you enough money to buy weapons and or an adventurer's kit. Enter the armored skirt. This item modifies armor to be more protective with the caveat that it becomes more cumbersome, but that usually doesn't matter. 
All you have to do is buy some super cheap chain mail for six GP and then an armored skirt for two, and it changes the chain mail as shown below. It becomes heavy armor, which you are proficient in, increases the strength bonus requirement to plus four, which you probably have anyway, and it increases the armor check penalty, but you probably meet the strength requirements so that the armor check penalty is ignored. Even if you don't meet the strength requirements, the chainmail is still flexible, so it doesn't impose a penalty on certain skills. This is a great item for early levels when you can't afford plate mail yet. The only reason that it's so low on the list is that there are relatively few classes that use heavy armor proficiency. Armored skirts can be used with some light armors, but I think the best use is here, with chainmail to make impromptu heavy armor. Moving on to number four, winter clothing. Winter clothing, listed in the book as clothing parentheses winter, are clothes that you can put on over most armors that reduce the level of cold by one step when wearing them. So, severe cold becomes minor cold to you, which means you're chilly, but you don't suffer any damage. The best part of winter clothing, though, is that it is super cheap, only four silver pieces. Not only is this great for buying this stuff, it's also fantastic for making it. With GM permission, you can use the earn income action to, say, hunt some furred animals. Then you can give that stuff as raw materials to your friend with the crafting skill, and they can make a set of winter clothing within a few days. Seriously, even a level 1 character can, again with GM permission, hunt animals, and if they roll well, in one day they can get enough pelts to make a set of winter clothes. And a level 1 character with the crafting skill can make a suit of this in three days. They don't even need the crafting formula for it as of the remaster. In fact, in a game I'm playing right now, we did just that. The party found ourselves teleported to the frozen north, and we were forced to head even farther north during our quest. We weren't near a town, or at least a town that had a shop, so we took some time off and most of us went hunting and gave our pelts to the investigator, who was an expert in crafting, and he made us each a set of winter clothing in record time. Super useful. As a side note, Pathfinder 1st Edition actually used to have clothes called a hot weather outfit that was designed to trap breezes and cool you off and reduce the effects from hot environments? Paizo hasn't reprinted that in Pathfinder 2nd Edition yet, but if they ever do, add that to this list. And now time for number three, a traveler's chair. Okay, so this is a wheelchair, but this wheelchair is just awesome. First of all, you can attach spiked wheels to it and attack your enemies, so that's just freaking metal as it gets. But the amazing thing about the traveler's chair is that it has interlocking pieces that allow it to easily traverse up and down and around difficult terrain. What the heck? We don't have that technology now! How is this non-magical, renaissance-age wheelchair beating modern, real-world technology? Trust me, as someone who had to push around a wheelchair as part of their job for several years, I can say it was a pain. I wish I would have had one of these during that job. But I hear you asking, none of my party is paraplegic, why do I need a wheelchair? Well, here's the thing, this item just has so much functionality. Has a party member succumbed to sleeping poison? Now you can easily move them around. Have an escort quest with a frail old man? Now you can push them around at full speed in this chair. You can even add some extra storage to the traveler's chair so it holds more stuff without weighing you down. It is fantastic. Now, we just need a higher level magical version that can fold up when not in use and we'd be set. Number two, swim fins. So let's be clear, these are just flippers and they're great. Unless your character has a swim speed, swimming in Pathfinder is a major pain. You can only swim a small distance every time you swim and every time you try and swim, you need to make an athletics check. So you may have to make three athletics checks in one round just to be able to swim, say, 20 feet. So at low levels, even your high-strength barbarian may fail to make any progress. And if you are a high-level character trying to swim in difficult water and you don't have the athletic skill, you will never make any progress, and you are actively punished if you try and do so because of the critical failure rules. While you have these guys on, you gain a plus five foot bonus to the distance you travel whenever you attempt a swim check. Not succeed, attempt. 
That means even if you critically fail your swim check, you move forward five feet. These little guys, 5GP for the pair, are lifesavers for anyone who was forced to swim and didn't pick up the athletic skill. If you ever think you might be swimming in a campaign and you don't have the athletic skill, I highly recommend picking up a pair when you have enough money that dropping 5GP isn't a big deal. And finally, number one. Okay, these are just so good, I don't even know how they're a thing. Cantrip decks. Cantrip decks came out in Secrets of Magic, and they're little cards, like playing cards, that you can buy. Each card has a cantrip spell on it like a scroll, except for anyone can use them. Fighters, rogues, barbarians if they're not raging, anyone. Now, the cantrips they cast are pretty weak, and each cantrip disappears after you use it once, so they aren't good as attack cantrips, but there are plenty of cantrips out there that are useful all the way up to level 20 that don't involve hitting people. How about the stabilized cantrip? Now, if your cleric goes down, the fighter, who's 30 feet away and can't get to them, can just cast stabilize. Press to digitation, now you can clean or change the color of clothing in just a few minutes of concentration. Telekinetic Hand would let a rogue steal the jail cell keys from inside a jail cell. Rousing Splash can be used to help douse someone who's on fire or to help someone who's taking persistent acid damage from not taking persistent acid damage. The list goes on. Cantrip decks cost 5 GP and give you 5 copies of a single cantrip that anyone can cast. Now there is a combo pack that costs 20 GP and gives you 24 cantrip cards, but that's one of every cantrip from the original player's handbook, so it's not as useful. Stick to the 5 cantrip decks where you can choose the 5 copies of the same cantrip that you want. And that's it. That's my list of the top five underrated low-level Pathfinder items. These aren't the only fun low-level items out there, but they are, in my opinion, some of the best. Maybe you can use some of them in your game, and if you do, come back here and let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you like this channel and want to see it grow, please like, subscribe, and comment. That tells YouTube and me that you would like to see more of this kind of content. Until then, thanks, good luck, and happy gaming.